This rather overwhelming slide shows the side chains of the 20 most common naturally occurring amino acids. And rather than worrying about the specific structures of these 20, I want to focus on the different classification schemes we use to put the amino acid side chains in different bins. This is really the most important thing to understand about the side chains, the properties that we use to categorize them. These are important because they help us really chunk the behavior of the amino acid side chains together and see how, for example, valine is very similar to leucine or glutamic acid is very similar to aspartic acid, for instance. The first class of amino acids I want to focus on are the aliphatic amino acids. Aliphatic amino acids contain only hydrocarbons in their side chain. Examples include leucine, isoleucine, valine, alanine, glycine, and proline. Now proline's unique. I've actually drawn out the entire amino acid structure because proline is cyclic. The amino nitrogen of the alpha amino acid is technically, in a sense, part of the side chain as well. Proline is the only amino acid that is cyclic like this with the amino nitrogen incorporated into the side chain. That gives it some interesting spatial properties, but at the end of the day, it's really an aliphatic amino acid. We can also identify a number of side chains that contain aromatic structures. And these contain either benzene rings or aromatic heterocycles within the side chain. So for example, phenylalanine contains a side chain with a CH2 group and a benzene ring. And the very similar tyrosine contains a phenol ring linked to a CH2 group in the side chain. We also find aromatic heterocycles in a few side chains, such as the indole ring in tryptophan and the imidazole ring in histidine. We also commonly make a distinction between polar and nonpolar amino acids. The aliphatic side chains are pretty clearly nonpolar with only hydrogen and carbon in their structures, while the polar side chains tend to have heteroatoms and polarized carbon heteroatom bonds which result in a dipole moment within the side chain. For example, the carboxylic acids, aspartic acid and glutamic acid, are most definitely polar, as are the side chains containing simple hydroxyl groups, such as threonine and serine. The amide-containing side chains, which are related to aspartic acid and glutamic acid, asparagine and glutamine, are also polar, as is the amino-containing lysine and the guanidine-containing arginine. These polar amino acids engage in relatively strong intermolecular forces within proteins and are commonly involved in chemistry, for example, in enzyme-catalyzed reactions. Cysteine and methionine are sort of borderline polar amino acids owing to the presence of the sulfur, and cysteine is a very common catalytic amino acid, as we'll see later. Finally, I want to point out the distinction between the acidic side chains and the basic side chains. There are just a few acidic and basic side chains of amino acids, but these are very, very important in enzyme-catalyzed reactions. So the basic amino acids are those that contain basic groups in their neutral forms. For example, arginine is an important example of a basic amino acid, as is lysine, containing the basic amino group. And it's worth pointing out that histidine is also a basic amino acid through its N2 nitrogen within the imidazole heterocycle. On the acidic side, the most important acidic group that we find in side chains is the carboxylic acid group, found for example in aspartic acid as well as glutamic acid. And note here that we're talking about side chain reactivity, not the carboxylic acid group in the amino acid or protein backbone. Cysteine with its relatively acidic thiol group also has the potential to act as an acidic amino acid, donate a proton, forming a thiolate S-. This figure from the website Compound Interest just summarizes a lot of these properties in a single infographic. And the matrix that follows on this slide, again, just really summarizes the properties of interest. So along the columns, you see the three-letter abbreviations for all 20 amino acids, as well as their one-letter abbreviations. And everywhere where you see a black box, that amino acid has that property. So for example, this box right here tells us that glycine is a relatively small amino acid. Or this box here tells us that lysine at physiological pH is a charged amino acid. We'll have more to say about some of these properties, but I wanted to introduce this here as a really nice summarizing matrix of the properties of the amino acids.